Where is the North Pole? Go on, I'll give you a second. It feels like a trick question. It is. Did you point here? You would be wrong. The North Pole is actually here, off the coast of Canada. But if I asked you in 1831, I don't know why I slapped that, if I asked you in 1831, it would have actually been inside Canada. In fact, every year it moves more and more. From 1999 to 2005, Earth's magnetic North Pole movement looked like this, moving at around nine miles per year, but more recently, it's increasing in speed. In 2017, the magnetic North Pole was a mere 240 miles away from where I would consider it actually should be, the geographic North Pole. The movement was happening so fast that the British Geological Survey team and the National Center for Environmental Information had to start taking measurements more regularly just to keep up. As of 2021, the magnetic North Pole is moving at 37 miles every single year, fast enough to evade an immortal snail, and it is heading directly towards Siberia. And I know what you're thinking, Russians. But no, from our best theory of what's happening, which is called dynamo theory, the magnetic field that encapsulates the Earth is created by the flow of molten magnetic materials in Earth's outer core. As these liquid metals flow, they produce electric currents around the Earth. According to Faraday's law, a moving current produces a magnetic field. The Earth is essentially just a giant magnetic lava lamp. This explains why the magnetic poles aren't necessarily at fixed points. In fact, we know from time to time these poles flip positions entirely. Paleomagnetic records, which are the magnetic fields preserved in rocks from the time of their formation, tell us that Earth's magnetic poles have reversed 183 times in the last 83 million years. The time intervals between these reversals average about 300,000 years, with the last one taking place about 780,000 years ago, so we are long overdue for a change. In the past 200 years, Earth's magnetic field has weakened by about 9% on average, and some people cite this as evidence that the pole reversal must be happening, but most of the scientific community isn't necessarily so convinced that the change is imminent just yet. The Earth's magnetosphere is what protects us as the sun expels a constant outflow of particles and the occasional vast cloud of hot plasma and radiation called a coronal mass ejection. These ejections are getting more violent in the next couple years as the sun is switching its magnetic poles, because it's the cool thing to do at the moment, some are concerned that if these coronal ejections hit the earth, they might wipe out electrical grids and the internet entirely. I'll link to the video I did recently on this in the description so you can find out more. But what is causing this shift to happen so quickly at the moment? Well, researchers think they've worked it out. But before that, a quick word from today's sponsor, Aura. Are you tired of constantly receiving spam phone calls or emails? While we do still have the internet before the sun ultimately destroys it, data brokers are out there making a fortune selling your information to robocallers, spammers, and others who want to learn more about you. Aura can identify data brokers exposed your information and automatically submit opt-out requests on your behalf. Brokers are legally required to remove your information if you ask them to do so, but they make it super hard to actually do this, which is why an automated system like Aura is the only real time effective way to fight back. It's a single app, so it's easy to set up. You don't have to download several different applications to get things working, which means you get everything at an affordable price. So let Aura do the hard work of keeping you safe online so you can focus on other tasks with peace of mind. To stop data brokers from exposing your information, go to the link down below, aura.com forward slash Dr. Ben to get a 14 day free trial and see if your personal information has already been compromised. Now, back to the video. Looking at the satellite data from the European Space Administration Swarm Satellite Mission over the last 20 years, researchers found that the position of the North Magnetic Pole has been largely determined by two large-scale lobes of negative magnetic flux on the core mantle boundary under Canada and Siberia. The magnetic blob, blob here being the technical term, lurking beneath Canada, slowly elongated and split into two, and the stronger of the two blobs slowly shifted towards the blob beneath Siberia. This has caused the magnetic North Pole to slip closer and closer to Siberia, and our best predictions look like this will continue for the foreseeable future. Okay, so that one felt like a hard one. Let me give you another try. All right, ding. Because I bet you thought I meant rotational North Pole, the axis the Earth is actually spinning around, not the magnetic one. Totally understandable. Go ahead, try again. Well, that's awkward, because no. Pretty close, 
but actually it's about a meter away from where it actually should be. The rotational axis of the Earth also is shifting location within the planet. This axis relative to everything else in our solar system isn't perpendicular to our celestial objects around us like the sun, but instead is at an angle that we know is about 23.5 degrees. It's this tilt that places the northern and southern hemispheres at different distances to the sun and produces summertime in one while the other one experiences winter. We know that this angle of 23.5 degrees isn't constant, in fact it can naturally vary from as much as 22.1 to 24 4.5 degrees over about a period of 40,000 years, so typically most of us don't really notice that. However, in the last two decades, the change has been much more rapid. Since 2003, the axis has moved 78 centimeters. And I know what you're thinking. Russians, no. Uh, this doesn't sound like much. You would be right, but it's, it's interesting because it is entirely the result of human activity. The period from 1993 to 2010, humans moved over 2,150 gigatons of water from below the ground to above the ground. That's enough to raise the height of all of the oceans on the planet by about six millimeters. That is a lot of water. And in doing so, they have fundamentally changed the way the Earth is spinning. All spinning objects have something called a moment of inertia that dictates how the object spins. It's kind of equivalent to inertial mass in linear motion. A more massive object takes more energy to get to a certain speed than a low mass object. Similarly, a object with a high moment of inertia takes more energy to spin up to a certain speed than a low moment of inertia object. Very hand-wavingly, as physicists are kind of prone to do, the moment of inertia varies by how much mass you have and the square of how far that mass is away from your axis of rotation. Let me demonstrate. If I spin my chair, holding two weights close to me, and then slowly extend them outwards, I slow down and pull a muscle in my neck. If I start slow and bring them in, I speed up and probably break something. The energy of this spinning system the whole time was the same, I'm dizzy, but where the mass was distributed is what has affected my rotational speed. I'm really dizzy. This is how a figure skater generates their insane spin speeds. They start with their hands out and as they pull them in towards their bodies, they accelerate. I actually learned most of my physics from watching figure skating. The same thing has happened with the earth. As we've pumped water from deep groundwater reservoirs up to the surface, the mass of the Earth has moved further away from its axis of rotation. It will both have slowed down how fast the Earth is spinning. In fact, an interesting tidbit I found recently, the Three Gorges Dam in China, if you fill it up all the way, it actually slows down the Earth's rotational speed by 60 nanoseconds. Not huge, but measurable. But also, because we didn't pump this groundwater up to the surface evenly across the surface of the planet, it has shifted the axis that the planet actually rotates around. To calculate the amount, scientists used radio telescope observations of quasars, super bright gas clouds surrounding supermassive black holes, and noticed that they weren't where they should be in the night sky. The shift in their location corresponded to a shift in the Earth's rotational axis of that 78 centimeters over a 20 year period. This shift is independent to any other main contributor to axial movement, which is usually tectonic plates, the movements of the Earth's crust relative to itself. This 78 centimeter contribution can be explained completely by groundwater redistribution. It is all us. And according to the research team that discovered this, the North Pole's drift due to groundwater extraction is probably permanent and probably growing every single year because groundwater systems are very slow to refill. In fact, in a lot of places, groundwater is actually expected to run out entirely due to human extraction. So one final time, where is the North Pole? Nope. Sorry. The northern arm of a compass points to the strongest southern pole magnet. The northern arm of a compass points this way, making this the south pole and this the magnetic north pole. I hate it too. Thanks very much for watching. Goodbye.